From watching the previous video, hopefully you have organized your source clips into the folders you want within the media library. Let's take a look at the next step in the typical editorial workflow, which is working with source clips in the source viewer. You just have to select a clip in the media library and it will automatically be loaded into the source viewer. Let's quickly run through navigation. You can play a clip by pressing the play button or pressing the spacebar. Alternatively, you can use the familiar J, K and L keyboard shortcuts to jog the clip forwards and backwards. To advance forward or backward one frame at a time, you can click the frame forward or frame backward button, or you can use the left and right arrows on your keyboard. To go to the beginning or end of a clip, you can click the previous transition or next transition buttons in the navigation controls. Or you can press the up and down arrows on the keyboard. You can also jog or shuttle the clip in the player. Dragging the scrub bar directly will shuttle through the clip and you can click anywhere on the scrub bar to jump the positioner. To jog a clip, just hover the cursor at the bottom of the image and drag left and right and you can spool through the media. To mark a source clip for the edit, you will find the mark in and mark out buttons located beneath the navigation controls. You can scroll to a frame and click the in button or press I and then scroll to another frame and press the OUT button or press O. Alternatively, if you know the exact timecode, you can click on the timecode display and type the timecode into the calculator and press ENTER to confirm. You will see the duration update in the timecode indicator with the timing between the IN and OUT points. One extra tip, if you adjust the duration value by clicking on the calculator or dragging its slider, this will adjust the out point. To navigate to the in or out point, you can click on the go to mark in or go to mark out. You can also press shift I or shift O to do the same via the keyboard. To remove your mark in and mark out, you can press option X. These commands are also located in the gear pull down menu. Go to the Mark sub-menu and you will find a variety of options to deal with in and out marks. Now I just want to sidetrack slightly and show another way in which you can view your source media. When you load a clip into the source viewer, you will see in the timeline area that there is a tab with a green highlight. When you click on this tab, it will display your source as a sequence or timeline. What's the point of this? Well, it allows you to see how many tracks are in the source, the in and out markers, and you would move around it like you would a regular sequence. In different cases, you could add effects to the source before editing it into the sequence. Another useful editorial function is when working with clips is adding markers to the source to pinpoint an area you would like to remember. To quickly add a marker to the current frame you are looking at in the source viewer, simply click the mark button or press M. This adds a marker to that particular frame and it is visible in the scrub bar. To go to a specific marker, you press shift up arrow or shift down arrow to navigate to the markers in the clip. To delete a marker, navigate to the same frame and in the pull down menu, you can choose mark and delete Q mark. Option M will delete the marker using the keyboard. Now coming back to the source tab and the source clip sequence, you saw how the marker appeared. I'll just add another marker to the source clip. In the sequence, you can click on the marker and edit the name in the text box. You can also click and drag the marker to move it up and down the source clip. You can have as many markers as you like in the source clip and each one can have its own comment for logging purposes. Once you are done, don't forget to switch back to the record tab with the red highlight. This is so you can see the active sequence that is being edited. As a last tip to working with the source viewer, 
There are a lot of auxiliary functions that you may not use all the time, but they're always accessible through the navigation controls. For example, clicking and holding down the play button reveals the different modes you can choose to play a clip. The same applies for the go to buttons located at both ends of the navigational controls. You can click and hold on the button to call up the pull down menu and you will find a variety of controls including navigation to markers and so on. In the next video, you'll learn how to view the source metadata and what it means.